a very good morning students in this lecture we are going to learn about the different elements of digital image processing system if you look at these block diagram these are the different elements or you can say the different components that are required for digital image processing there are eight basic components here namely the image sensors specialized image processing hardware computer mass storage image processing software hard copy image displays and network let us see the function of each and every element of this digital image processing system one by one let us start with this image sensors whenever we want to process any image with the help of digital systems the very first step is we have to acquire the image the required image and this acquisition of image can be done with the help of image sensors so these image sensors helps us to capture the image and convert it into a digital form okay so this requires two elements one is called as the physical device that is sensitive to the energy radiated by the object to be imaged that is nothing but sensors it helps to acquire the image the second element that is required for this image sensing operation is a digitizer the function of which is the acquired image from the physical device that is the output of the physical device has to be converted into a digital form so that it can be processed by digital systems so this is the function of the digitizer this image sensor it consists of two elements one namely the physical device the other one namely the digitizer okay the next is specialized image processing hardware and this hardware also consists of a digitizer and some hardware to perform the other basic operations whenever we speak about hardware a very example very simple example we can say it is an alu it is nothing but an alu so this specialized image processing hardware also will contain an arithmetic and logic unit which performs both arithmetic as well as logical operations on the entire images in parallel and this type of hardware is also known as a front end subsystem the main feature of this specialized image processing hardware is it's of very high speed it works with a very high speed therefore the fast functions which cannot be performed by the main computers it can be handled with this specialized image processing hardware that is the function of this okay moving on to this computer this uh, computers used in image processing system is usually a general purpose computer but this computers that we use for digital image processing it can range from a personal computer to a super computer based on the applications that we use okay in some dedicated applications some specially designed computers are also used to achieve the required performance the next is image processing software this software for image processing it has specialized modules which perform specific tasks okay some software packages have the facility for the user to write code using the specialized modules a very simple example we can take us our matlab in matlab if you look at our matlab there is a separate toolbox called image processing toolbox and this tool toolbox can be named as a specialized module that helps us to write codes for all image processing applications next coming on to this mass storage images require large amount of space storage space okay so mass storage capacity is very important in digital image processing applications for example if you take a 1024 cross 1024 image with each pixel is represented by means of 8 bits then this complete image of 1024 by 1024 requires around 1 megabyte of storage space if the image has to be stored without any compression 
So this much amount of storage space is required. And this is one of the component that is required for images to be stored. And there are three types of um, storages required based on the application. First, you can name it as short-term storage for using during processing of images. And this can be provided by using computer memory. Simple computer memory can be used as a short-term storage. The second type of storage is online storage. And this type of storage is usually used whenever fast recall is required. It, it, it gives frequent access to the stored data. And this is provided by magnetic disks and optical media storage. Previously, we have seen short-term storage, which is given by computers and frame buffers. The next is online storage, which can be provided by magnetic disks and optical media storage. The third one can be named as archival storage for infrequent accesses. Whenever uh, we access the image very rarely, in such cases, we can go for this archival storage and it requires a large amount of storage space and the stored data is accessed infrequently. So this is with respect to the mass storage component. And for this archival storage, usually magnetic tapes and optical disks packed in juke boxes are used. Okay. Then is the image displays. And for displaying the image, we can make use of either a TV monitor or graphic display cards. All these display devices can be used for displaying the processed images. And most commonly used image display is color TV monitor. These monitors are driven by the output of image and graphic display cards. Okay. The last is hard copy devices. And these hard copy devices are used for recording images. Whenever the images has to be recorded, we have to make use of this hard copy devices, which includes laser printers, film cameras, heat sensitive devices, inkjet units, digital units like optical CD-ROM disks, etc. So these devices can be used as hard copy devices. Even though the highest resolution is provided by the camera film, the written material preferred is paper. Okay. The next is network. This networking is a function used in all computer systems today. Now, since image processing applications need large amount of data, the main consideration here is the bandwidth. See, we are, whenever we are, an image is transmitted through a network, it requires a large amount of data. Based on the size of the image, large amount of data is required. So large amount of bandwidth has to be allocated for image transmission. And uh, images, that is communications with the remote cell sites are done with the help of internet, which uses optical fibers and other broadband technologies. So these are related to the networks for whenever the image that is being acquired and stored is transmitted. Okay. So these are the basic operations that are performed in any digital image processing systems. One is image acquisition. That is with the help of image sensors, we are sensing the image and converting it into a digital form. And you are going to store the images based on the applications that are short-term storage, frequent storage, that is online storage, and archival storages. Then we have to process the image with the help of hardware as well as with the help of softwares. And these hardware include arithmetic logic units, as we discussed. It performs both arithmetic and logical operations in parallel. The next is image processing softwares, for which we can consider MATLAB as an example, uh, where we have a separate image processing toolbox to process all the image processing applications. And then all these images after processed and acquisition, it has to be communicated based on the distance that we are going to communicate, the type of network may be varying. So that's, that comes under communication. And whenever the images after processing has to be displayed, the most commonly used TV monitor can be used. So in this lecture, 
we have a clear understanding about the basic elements or you can say the different components basic components of digital image processing systems thank you